All right, so what I want to do here is bring back a website that was previously backed up with Duplicator. Here's what you need. Either your website from a previous week or my website. You can get a copy of my website if you need it out of the web design folder. If you open up web design, open up CIS 123, you want to copy, don't cut and paste, you want to copy the one called 2019-1021 site. Copy that to your desktop. Now, this is a communal thing. Do not delete it. Do not rename it. Do not mess it up for everyone else. You need to copy it and paste it to your desktop. Make sure you've got the copy of that. If you need any help, let us know, of course. You need the copy of that. Unless you have your website still on your flash drive. Remember two weeks ago, we use Duplicator to make a copy of your website. And I said you want to copy all of those files onto your flash drive. If you don't have your copy, you can borrow mine for the moment. And these steps will be the same steps that you will need to do eventually to resurrect your website. So once you've copied that to your desktop, we'll proceed. Anyone having any trouble getting that? All right, so what this folder is, is a complete website. What's in the folder is two things. A zip file, which has every single picture, every single page, every, everything that is your website. And it's all zipped up. You do not want to unzip this, actually. Uh, we're going to keep this as a zip file. And the reason is because this installer file will do the unzipping for us. And this installer file will let us bring the site back to life in a moment. So this was the result of when we made a backup of our site before. It made a zip file, and it made an installer file with instructions to bring it back to life. Those are the two things that you need. Those are the two things that you get when you make a duplicator backup. And we're going to need both of those in the following steps. Keep the zip file zipped. Okay, we need, to, we need to do a couple of things that we've already done before. We need to start MAMP. We need to create a database. Besides that, things will be a little different. So let's go ahead and launch MAMP from your Start menu. Let that start up. I know people are having some trouble sometimes at home that MAMP doesn't behave perfectly. That is unfortunate. Sometimes it does happen that people's particular computer setups might have extra protection or virus, antivirus or something, and sometimes it conflicts with, with MAMP. We've managed to set this up properly for several people that brought in their own laptops. And uh, if you're having trouble, bring in your computer and we'll figure it out. Or use our computers to do the assignments. Okay, MAMP started up and it was so long ago. Where do I go to create a database from this screen here? Open Web Start page first. Yep. So click the Open Web Start page. Good. What's next from this screen? Tools. Great. PHP, my admin. So we still need a website to, I mean, we still need a database for our website. Um, but subsequent steps will be a little bit different because we've already got a complete website. I don't want to start with my blank WordPress website again. I want to start with my, my last version of my site, which we'll see in a moment here. Of course, as usual, we'll click New to create a new database. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, I'll call it WP for the moment. Remember to click Create on the right side. So this should look familiar from before, but there will be a difference in a moment. All right, so I've got a brand new database, WP. We need to put a copy of our last website into the htdocs folder. So instead of starting with a brand new empty WordPress site, I am starting with the folder of my previous site. So in the, in the C drive, 
in in this PC in the local disk C inside the MAMP folder htdocs folder you're going to copy the the site the one that you got out of the network folder copy that into htdocs so i need to access that site in the web browser this is very similar to what we've done before but the difference is going to be that we're going to start with a website that previously existed instead of an empty WordPress site. So back on the web browser, you need to go to the address of where that folder is at, which is http localhost slash the name of the folder 2019-10-21 site. Now, I, I named my folder two weeks ago when, when we did this. I named it 2019-1021 site with a space, like I normally would name something. The problem might be that when you try to access the, um, the, the folder sometimes, because of that space, there may be um, problems that it cannot find it because you see here it put for me uh, percent 20 site so you want to avoid spaces in your file names it worked on mine but that doesn't guarantee it always works anyway if you then see here's the folder here's the zip file here's the installer click on that installer dot php file and then just wait a moment. The installer is what's going to do the unzipping and stuff. So let's pause right there. Did everyone find in the web browser, did it take you to then duplicator step one? Anyone having any trouble? We want to make sure we're all here. If we're not here, it's not going to work. Anyone having any trouble? Anyone need any help? So if you can see the, um, the duplicator screen, you're in the right place. If you can see the duplicator screen, this is one of the reasons that you know that it's different because before, when we put a brand new empty WordPress site, it had the steps to create an empty site. I don't want to create an empty site. I want to continue with my previous site. And you're going to see this regardless of any type of site that you've ever backed up. In my case, then, I say archive pass and validation pass. It, it found the zip file, and the zip file is fine. And if you're curious, you can look inside of it if you want. It's not, not too much to look in there. Validation, everything else looks good in here, too. Uh, so Alex, question right here. So we've got archive, we've got validation, both of those say pass. And under options, you don't really have to do anything under options. You just say, I have read and accepted all the terms. And click next. All right, so here's where the PHP, here's where the installer.php file is extracting the zip file for you. So you don't have to unzip your own zip file because the installer.php will do it for you. Does it need to be a zip? What if you like, already have it? Does it matter? There is a separate option somewhere that says use an unzipped site. It expects there to be a zip site. But if you've unzipped it, there's an extra option somewhere there to say use an un unzipped site. All right, I'm at, I'm at step two of four. Anyone, everyone else there? Anyone need some help? Everyone's on step two of four. Yeah. 
So here it says, okay, let's install your website to the database. And there's a basic and a cPanel. We'll look at cPanel later. But then we've got basic right here. So if you notice these options, connect and remove all data. All right, everyone that needs a little bit of help, you can get help, but a little quieter, please. So David and everyone here, a little quieter, please. You need help, yes, but let's be a little quieter. We've got a whole class trying to follow along. So action, connect and remove all data. Um, this is saying we're about to connect to a database, and if there's anything already in the database, it's going to remove the data. So be careful about that. The other options are create a new database. I'm going to leave that as is, but there is an option from this screen to create a new database. We did it ourselves inside of phpMyAdmin, and we've got a database to work with, but we could, from this screen, also create a database. We won't, but just make a note that we could. Our host, our, our web server, is localhost. We're not on the real internet, so we're going to leave that as localhost. We're about to connect to a database. What's the name of the database we, might, we made a moment ago? I called mine WP. That was the name of the database that you created a little while ago. Mine was WP, so that's what it's asking for right here. What's the name of your database? WP. Um, when we were setting up the process with a blank Word document, uh, with a blank WordPress site, we needed a user and a password, and remember both of those were root. So, when, so even when we set up like our basic WordPress, our basic uh, empty WordPress site, it asked us at a certain point, what's the name of your database, what's the user, what's the password, and right here they're both root. So you want to plug those in. And those come from back here on MAMP, the MAMP start screen was saying that. The user to your, to your databases is root and the password is root. So we've got what's our database, what's the user, what's the password. We've got these other options, which you can skip for the moment. And we want to test. Let's test that we name, let's test that we're trying to, correct, to connect to the proper database. Let's test that it's the right user and the right password. So I'll click test. Both of mine say pass. Anyone get any fails here? If you do, we want to fix those, of course. We'll click Next. It's going to confirm one more time, and it says, OK, you're about to resurrect. You're, so, you're about to bring back a website that previously existed. We're going to store it in your database called WP. And if there was any data in that database, it's going to get deleted. That's why there's been more than one time that it says, you know, are you sure you know what you're doing? We do. We're web designers. So we'll click OK. So depending on how complex your website is, depending on how much data it has, how many products or pictures or plugins or whatever, this might take a moment. In my case, it's already done before I finish my sentence. But this is a process that we will do, of course, on other days, and especially when I've designed an amazing website on my computer and I want to upload it to the real internet. I want to take my website off of my laptop and put it onto the real internet at victorsbakery.com. We would do the same sort of steps. We would use Duplicator to make a copy of it so that then we can upload it, so then we can then run this resurrection program. And we'll have that uh, lecture example again later. So here it says, OK, we're uploading it. If you want to, you can change the name of the site. I, I kept that as my site. You can change that if you want. And we've got under Options, 
new admin account. Now, I'm using the, just the default admin and password, I think. Um, but here, you could, at this step here, add a new user. You could add your name, your password, your email um, to get into this, into this site. You're, if you're using my site, it's my username and my password, which I'm pretty sure is admin and password. But here you could create a brand new login if you want. We'll click next. And now I'm going to log in. Um, I didn't get any other fails or anything here. Great. And then I'm going to log in. Admin login. Hmm. This might have to do, oh, I know what's going on here. Um, for some reason, it changed the address right here, 21 space site. There's supposed to be a space up here. That's kind of weird. Um, but you see here, I had gone to 2019-20-21 space site. For some reason, it changed it here to no space. I probably didn't like it. It struck the, uh, the percent 20. Yeah, so we'll, we'll fix it if it doesn't work. Uh, this is actually a good example about, well, it always works perfectly when the instructor does it and I do it at home and it doesn't work. Okay, well, <laughs> that's fine because I'll show you here an example what happens when things go wrong. I'm going to try it like this. I wasn't expecting this. I'm going to try it right here. I'm going to put the space back into the address. For whatever reason, it took the space out. I know there was a space there, so I'm going to try that. And if that doesn't work, I have other plan, plan, plans. Don't worry. So press enter on that with a space and it's still gonna be weird okay no problem this will be then the perfect example of um, I'm gonna need to do it again one more time and that's okay because this gives us the practice of uh, how all of this would work and because of that space I could say maybe I did it on purpose because of that space the whole site broke the, the, there was a space in my folder, remember? Right here. My folder was 2019-1021 space site. And this is to show you that those spaces in your file name sometimes break things. And it seems that that's what's happening right here. Because there was that space, everything got broken. And then like my graphics are missing. I can probably log in, but it'll still be all broken. Let me just confirm this. Yeah, it's going to be broken because of that space. OK, no problem. That'll give us the practice to be able to do it again. So here's what we'll do. Um, we'll do the same steps. Let's create a database one more time. We could use the existing database, but again, just to do the full process. You can have as many databases as you want for as many sites as you want. And just for the practice, one more time, let's create one more database. This time I'm going to call it Kitty. These databases can be called anything you want. What's that? You mean do the work for people instead of them themselves? OK. Um, that's a good learning experience, so we'll, we'll address that in a moment. Um, out of just curiosity here, this, this database that was empty a moment ago, after we tried to run this duplicator, it filled it with the stuff of our website. It's kind of a broken website, but this database now has stuff. This one we just created right now, Kitty, is empty. So next we need the site. Now, I had copied it onto my desktop before copying it into htdocs. If you didn't do that, that's fine. You can go back to the network folder. We're going to make another copy of the site, but this time you're going to rename it, maybe take out the space. So I'm going back to the network folder. I'm going to copy it to my computer again. But this time I'm just going to rename it so that it says the date. I'm just going to take it out. Space site, just rename it so it's got the date. We'll call it my site. Call it thing or kitty cat or whatever. It is. That space was really messing us up. One little space was messing it all up. So 
I'm going to rename it just to have. Now, on my, on my desktop, not in the folder, because you're going to affect everyone else, my copy that I copy here, I'm going to rename it just so that it has the date. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put today's date. Today is the 4th. With no spaces. So yeah, we're doing the same thing again, but it's good practice because eventually we'll need to do something like this um, on, like on a real server on the real internet. It's in the So this one with the new and improved no spaces name, that's the one that I then need to copy back into the htdocs folder. So back on your uh, MAMP htdocs folder, to this newly renamed folder with no spaces, copy it. So there. You can leave that one alone. That's its own site. It's in its own database. It's its own thing. Maybe we'll fix it. Probably not. But we can just easily copy a brand new site here as long as it's got its own database. This folder has its installer, which we need to go through again. And then we'll resurrect the site. Back on the web browser. On the web browser, well, we've got the address localhost 11.04. I put a brand new copy of my archived site. Browser, we go to the address localhost slash whatever the name of the folder is, 2019.11.04. There's the zip file, there's the installer file. Click on the installer.php. And we see this again, the, the four steps. So from this screen is where we say the I've read the I've read the term, so I'll click that and click next. Here's where the installer file is extracting things for me. Depending how complex our website is, this part could take a moment. Because this is where it's unzipping for us all the pictures, all the text, everything. OK, this looks familiar. We did it five minutes ago. What do we fill out here? Database. That's right. What are they specifically? Kitty, root, and root. Yep. We made a brand new database now. Technically, we could reuse the one from before because connect and remove all data. So if we again put WP, it'll wipe out the old one, and our new site will go into it instead. Just as practice I'm showing you, we can do that. We have the option here as well, create a new database. That's a way. Maybe that can save us a step. Maybe instead of instead of in, in PHP my admin creating a database there, we could create it from here too. It's just another workflow. But this is Kitty at the moment, in my case, root and root. So database is Kitty, user is root, and password is root. And then 
click next on that. Oh, uh, first you have to test it. It has to confirm, does that database exist? Does your password match? After you do that test, then we can go to next. If you get a fail here, we can open up these boxes and it'll tell you the password's wrong or whatever is bad. And then it'll tell you how to fix it. And then you click next. It'll do one more check here that we're about to connect to something and erase everything there. So we'll say, okay. So we see this part again here. This is our address. Here's where it is at. So it looked like a moment ago when we had that space, it removed it here for some reason, and then it broke the whole site. This looks fine. That is the name of my folder. Um, the name of the site if you want to change it. If optionally you want to create a new user, you could, but I've, I've got the, the user already of, of uh, admin and password. I'll click next. Everything looks good here. If there were any problems, it would still try to tell you here. Got some online facts to look up. There's the Duplicator Pro version. This is the free version. This plugin does this very well, totally for free. But there's the paid one where you can have it do it on a schedule. You can have it back up to your Dropbox, etc. And I'm going to admin login. There we go. The screen is not all broken up because the um, the actual uh, file is not changed. And you're going to log in with admin and password, the worst password ever. I'll log in. And there we go. So this resurrected, if I go back to dashboard, this resurrected my the website that I was working on when we had that lecture. You would follow basically the same steps for your own website. I've made a duplicate copy, and I can bring it back to life. Um, let me pause for a moment just to check if everyone is at this point, then we'll move on. But anyone having any trouble? Is that is everything working kind of all right so far?
Okay, so it was a few steps we saw here. Um, the big idea is I've got a WordPress website. I use the duplicator plugin to make a backup of it and archive. It gave you a zip file. It gave you an installer file. Keeping those two files then is your complete website. That's what we did a few weeks ago. If you did that a few weeks ago with us, with me, that's what you've got. You've got a folder with your zip file and your installer. Well, today we used that folder um, to you know, bring the site back to life, as we saw here with the, um, with the various screens, the various steps of the duplicator. We ran into a little trouble where we had a space in the file name. But OK, how do I fix it? I just did it again. Sometimes that's what happens with technology. You know, I thought I did it right. Why doesn't it work? You do it again, and then you might have missed something different the first time, and then the second time it works. Sometimes even the third time. I've taught, you know, classes at various colleges for over 10 years, and sometimes with technology, you just do it again, and then it works. So we did it again, and it brought back my site from two weeks ago. You should try to practice to do this with your own site, if you have your own site. If you never backed up your own site two weeks ago, that's OK. You can practice with this one. All I wanted to do for the lecture at the moment was walk us through bringing a site back to life. Um, this has been recorded, of course. You can replay it if you need to. We're going to have more practice with this as the weeks go on. Um, but I just wanted to go up to this point with the lecture. I know for a few people it didn't fully work. I just need to see one-on-one -on -one what happened. Um, for a few people, it seemed like it's still referencing the old broken website for some reason. So we'll look at that in a moment. But raise your hand if it did work up to you to this point. Raise your hand. Okay, cool. This is kind of a complicated thing, and if you got it to work, great. If not, we'll figure it out. But if it did work, very good. Um, let's do a little pause for a little quick break. When we come back, I'm going to get the bowl of doom here, and then we're going to do the, uh, the partner thing. So it's 11.52, we'll be back at, I mean, it's 1.52, we'll be back in 10 minutes at uh, 2.02, .02, and we'll go on. If it didn't work, call us over, and then we'll go on.